Hi everyone, I am Lily Young, the Red Lipstick Hustler, and we're going to be discussing The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 6, Episode 3. Are you ready? But first, I need you guys to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It's important that you do that. I really, really need your like. So hit like and let's get started. So I started off with Robin. She's laying in the bed being lazy. One, I already been getting on her. I don't know why Robin's not getting it together. One, calling Robin's name. Um, she gets up and uh, start getting the kids ready for homeschool. Then she go back to bed. Then Warren, he comes in and he's fussing at Robin because he already don't tell her. Now, Robin, that's a turn off. You laying in the bed too much, Robin. So um, ever since the pandemic has started, it has taken a toll on Robin and she can't just get going anymore, which I understand because it took a toll on me as well. And I really couldn't get going either. It's like I was stuck in slow motion for a little while and that really just messed me up. So I'm kind of glad we're coming out of the pandemic and hopefully Robin get it together. So we go to uh, uh, Karen and her husband, Ray, which I call him Uncle Jessup. And uh, she's working on her website and everything. And Karen and Ray, they trying to work together on the internet, showing different things for her business and everything. Um, watching Karen and Ray work together is like watching soap melt. That's just how I feel about those two working together. And it's not about being a being a their age or anything. It's just it's like an odd couple. She's so much younger than Ray. She's on and popping, and Ray is like a papa, Uncle Jessup. Then we had Giselle and Ashley. They having lunch, and um, Ashley said she okay. She said that uh, being pregnant this time is different, and she claims Michael is excited about it. Whatever. But I'm not buying that. And um, she tells Giselle about what Mill had said about having a C-section and everything and about her getting her clitoris done. They talk about that. And she talks about what Mill said about what Giselle has said and how she felt about Giselle just being a pretty face. Mm, you knew Ashley was going to tell that. And um, Giselle is like, Mill... Make your mind up. Am I a pretty face or I got to get sold? Which one is it, Mill? So, um, Giselle don't know what to think of Mill right now, which I can understand it because Mill said at that table, talking about Giselle, um, Karen, Giselle, I can tell I'm a good judge of character. And um, I can tell Giselle has a good soul. But when she was with the ladies at Karen's, she said something totally different. She said she thinks Giselle is nothing but a pretty face. Hmm. Okay, now Mia. Um, Giselle mentions that she's going to give Ash. She tells Ash she's going to give her a pampering party. And she said, do you, she, she said for herself, she doesn't want Karen to come. But Ashley said, I would love for Karen to come. It would mean, you know, a lot for Karen to be there. She wants Karen to be there. So apparently Karen is going to be there. Um, they discuss who gets their little... Oh, I already talked about that click done. I don't even like talking about that. That whole thing with me and that click thing is just, it's too much. Ashley was saying about the click situation that most people that get their clitorias done are porn stars. But I think Mia was a stripper, not a porn star. I don't know Mia personally, but um, I don't think she was a porn star. She's going to own up tonight, you know, that she was a stripper instead of a bartender. The lie she told. Okay, we'll get to that part, okay? <laughs> um, so they go to where uh, Robin is at the warehouse and she's considering getting a warehouse because she's overwhelmed. She doesn't have enough space in her home. Uh, it's best that she get a warehouse and then she's getting a lot of orders now. And uh, she uh, she has a new friend there who is... Uh, Ostella, very beautiful Ethiopian lady. Uh, then Wendy arrives and um, they introduce each other. They're like, I'm, and Wendy's like, I'm from Nigeria. And she's like, I'm from Ethiopia. So they kind of click and they like each other, those two. And then uh, Robin's like, you come in those shoes? And um, Wendy's like, yeah, this is just my little Gucci. You know, girl, you who gonna wear Gucci heels to a warehouse? Come on, Rob. I mean, uh, Wendy. 
And then she said, well, I still have some her Louboutins. They neither one of them should have worn Louboutins or Gucci heels. They should have put on some kicks, some tennis shoes, sneakers or whatever you want to call it. And so um, now we back at Mia and her husband and they are discussing business and they sitting up going over like certain things got to do with their new things they're going to be doing or whatever. She discussed her and Wendy's situation and she said that Eddie, they both talking, saying that Eddie acts like he's scared of Wendy. I kind of think that a little bit. I think they are a good couple, a good marriage, Wendy and Eddie. But from when they showed at Karen's house, Wendy is rather controlling. I like Wendy. I like her. She's smart and educated. But um, Wendy does come off very controlling, especially when she was telling Eddie what to put on the paper. When they was playing a game, it's supposed to be, you know, to see how much they know about their mate. And she was controlling him. So I do see what Mia is saying on that part. Then we go to where Candace is telling Chris she and Karen needs to meet up. Candace's mom is on the phone. She tells her mom she is letting Chris manage her. And her mom like, really? Whatever. Her mom feels like I do. That's not a good idea. Um, he doesn't have the experience in the music industry to be managing her or in the acting field to be managing her. He absolutely don't. So I understand Candace's mom. It's not a good idea, Candace. You need a real manager, okay? You're doing great things. You don't want to mess it up. Uh, so we'll go back to Wendy. Wendy pays Karen a visit at our beautiful home, her rented home, for her to be the grand dumb. Rent it home. They go down to Karen's uh, woman cave or whatever she called it. And Wendy is telling Karen about she wants to start a business. She want to be the black Martha Stewart. Um, that she's going to start her essential business first with candles. She brought a candle with her. She um, give Karen one of the candles. And Karen states that she liked the way it smells. And she asked Wendy, does she have a business plan? And you would think Wendy is a professor that she would know she has to have a business plan. Wendy, come on now. Wendy was like, um, um, I did a, a robot like a one page and Karen like one page and Wendy like, oh, don't start on me, Karen. Don't be mean to me. She's not being mean to Wendy. She's just really being real. A business plan is imperative when you're starting a business and apparently Wendy hasn't done that. She's a professor. Very questionable, Wendy. So, um, Wendy more so is acting like a child while Karen is telling her about she need a business plan. Then um, they show, it goes to Karen and um, Karen pulls up at Candace's house in her white, beautiful Maserati. I actually, before I, cause I have a, two vehicles. I have my um, Lexus NX 300, I bought a year ago, brand new. Uh, and I have a Mercedes, but before I got my Mercedes, which I had a Mercedes before I just wanted another one. But before I got my Mercedes, I actually wanted a, White Maserati. So, Karen, you put up in my car. That's my car. I wanted a white Maserati, but I ended up getting another Mercedes. So, Karen pulls up in her um, white Maserati. Uh, she she comes in to um, Candace's house, and she complimenting everything because she's talking good about Candace's house. And Karen's like, we clean up the ice just for you, Karen. You know, she's just trying to make Karen feel welcome. And uh, Karen offers her tea. They go sit at the... Well, Karen's like, we can just sit here at the... Uh, at your centerpiece. And she was like, no, we're going to go sit in the dining room. And they went and sat at the dining room table to have their tea. And it's rather a nice dining room. I like the green, beautiful velvet chairs that she had at her table. Very nice. And they're talking and everything. And um, Candace started talking. Then she asked Karen about some of the things with the situation with Monique. And Karen said she doesn't regret anything that she did. And um, Karen says she would not have done anything different. And Candace come back with saying, well, it makes me feel I can't trust you. Right now, I can't trust you. And I understand Candace because Karen to her was like another mom. And to take sides of Monique was rather painful for Candace. I completely understand that. I completely do. So I still feel Karen is wrong on so many levels. Um, she thought that Monique would come back to the show. She would have her as an ally, but Monique didn't come back and she chose the wrong side. But coming to um, Candace's house, trying to make it right, 
It's a good thing that she's trying, but to me, Karen is fake. It's coming out off fake, and therefore Candace can tell as well, and she doesn't feel that Karen is trustworthy. She's just not at all. So we go to Giselle. Giselle is um, at the spa setting up for, you know, for Can uh, not Candace, um, Ashley's pamper party. She's setting up for Ashley's pamper party so if they can do something nice for Ashley. She put up the little decorations or whatever. And the first person to get there is Miss Candace. Yes, Candace get there early before everybody else. And her and just Giselle are talking. And um, she's telling Giselle about uh, Karen and therefore and how she felt about Karen and everything. And she's uh, telling Giselle about um, Karen with her bullshit. Karen full of it, full of BS. That's what Karen is full of. Then the other ladies start coming in and Wendy, she's excited about her happiness, her two new boobs. And um, she's tooting her little booty out, showing her new little booty. See, girls like me, I always had that, so I ain't got to try to show it off. It's been there. God bless me. But anyway, you know, um, Wendy's showing off her new goods. And so they all sit down and they welcome uh, Ostella, Ostella in. I think that's her name, the Ethiopian beautiful girl. And um, Karen and Giselle, they ain't dealing with each other. They both feel like they need to, one of them need to apologize. But I don't think it's going to happen no time soon. Um, so they sitting and they talking and everything. And... They played a little game, um, and they was to see who's, to, for them to guess who's pregnant belly. And um, they even put little Candace in there. You know, Candace ain't never been pregnant, but Candace said she was pregnant with possibilities. Um, Mill, you know, Wendy were arguing and everything, and uh, Wendy is at the point where she's like, oh, I got time today, Mill. I got time today. She let Mill know she got time. She said, tick tock, Mill. I got time today. She ready for Miss Mill. But uh, Mill ain't scared. Now, she, you know, she ain't afraid. And um, so Mill come back with a comeback when she said that tick tock, I got tick tock, I got time for you today, Mill. Mill said, well, you must be unhappy. You must be unhappy. I don't know. Wendy said, you must be unhappy, huh? Because you don't want got your click done. Those two right there. I think they're going to be like this the whole season. I'm going to enjoy it. Let me get my popcorn and enjoy it. And then Giselle said, uh, Wendy, let Mill talk because she knows she wasn't giving Mill the opportunity to talk or anything. And Giselle, by Giselle saying that, that made Wendy feel like, I'm on your side. I've been taking up for you, Giselle. You should be team Wendy. So Wendy doesn't like that Giselle is not siding with her. Um, Wendy... Um, and Candace are in the bathroom talking. And Candace said that she realized that Mill likes to push her buttons, Wendy. That's what she tells Wendy. So Wendy better be careful because Mill is trying to remain on this show. She's new to the show. And I kind of feel like, because she's been a stripper and they're very competitive. And Wendy is very competitive too because she's a news broadcaster. So um, they always two keep bumping heads. And I do feel that Mia will do certain things to push Queen Wendy's buttons. I just feel that she will. She's trying to make her mark on this show. So uh, the ladies talking and... Um... Hold on, you guys. I think I skipped something. Did I skip something? Um, the ladies are talking and everything, and it shows that... Um... Oh, also, the, it, the part that I skipped was Mill and her husband. They were in the bedroom, and they were discussing her mom. And Mill is sad, and she began to cry because she said her mom and dad were both on drugs. And that um, because of that, she ended up in the foster care. And she doesn't have a great connection with her mom. She said she think the last time her mom was there was Valentine's Day. And she want to have her mom come over again. And that she feel like... Um, she doesn't have a mom. And I can relate to that because my mom left when I was a baby. And 
she died when I was like either five or six somewhere along there and I never knew her. So when I went to her funeral, I didn't cry because I didn't know her, you know? So it's hard to have connection with someone you never knew, but it affects me now that I'm older. I've cried since I'm grown and older, you know? Um, I really cried a lot about it after I was 38 because I started um, reliving some things and I had a pivotal moment at 38. So I cried more. But I didn't cry when she died because I didn't know her. So I understand Mia. She never felt like she had a mom. I myself, I never um, in my life call anybody mom, a mother, a mommy, or none of those things. So I can connect with, him, with her on that. Um, so like I stated, uh, Jose, I mean, the, um, I went, I'm going back to the part with Mia and Wendy. Mia and Mia, Mia and Wendy was going at it and everything. And they even mentioned about, um, uh, I think Estella mentioned about Karen used to, she heard that Karen used to drink a lot. And Mia explains about her situation with being a stripper and everything. And uh, about when she was a stripper, she owned up to she wasn't a bartender. Thank you, Mia. Uh, but when she was a stripper, um, they didn't have a pole in there or anything. And that all she had to do was wear beautiful gowns and sit and talk with the men. And she said uh, most of the time she didn't have to take her clothes off. I don't know how true that is. But from what I hear and what I've seen in strip clubs, you have to take your clothes off, Mia. Because when I moved here to Atlanta... Uh, that was something they would do regular the salon I worked at. They was like, come on, go to strip club with us. But they would go every night. I'm not the type. I don't like strip clubs at all. And they talked me into going um, one night with them. I didn't like it because I don't want to give nobody my money. You're supposed to tip the people. I didn't tip anybody because I just wasn't giving my money up and I didn't go anymore. Strip clubs are not for me. And a lot of women in Atlanta, they like to go, but they say they're not gay. So it's something. They claim they like to go there because me in there. I don't know. It wasn't for me. But anyway, Mia said that there wasn't a poll there. And then Karen said, well, I was going to ask Mia to um, show me a couple of things. I'm thinking about getting a poll. Uh, you know, the one you could put in your home. Karen, shut up. Karen, you are not getting on a poll. You are too old to even do it. Now, it is some people do it for exercise. But me, myself, I'm not that girl. It's not for me neither. Karen, it ain't for you. And it ain't for me, okay? But, uh... No one believes Mia that she um, kept her clothes on. Like Ashley said, all the clubs that she has been to, they take their clothes off. So Mia, you're not telling the truth. You're not owning up to everything. You're just giving us bits and pieces. And um, uh, Giselle decides she's going to leave early. And Karen said, Giselle always leave everything early. That's who Giselle is. Then they go to Nate telling us about episode number four. So episode number four, they show Giselle's oldest daughter. She was, uh, was supposed to get her permit. So we're going to find out everything on that. She didn't look too happy when she got in Giselle's car. Then we go to where Giselle is um, texting Mia. And she wants to be able to her and Robin to meet up with Mia by, her, by themselves without Karen. And come to find out that Mia texts them back. And, she, and what, actually she meets with Karen, Mia. And she tells Karen what, you know, Giselle and Robin has said. And it's like, you can't tell me who I can bring to lunch with me. If I'm having lunch with somebody, I feel you need to let me know if you're going to bring someone. And it's up to me if I want extra, an extra person to come because I'm inviting you. So I disagree with Mia. So, um, yeah, uh, they're going to show where Mia is being very nasty towards Robin and um, Giselle. And I kind of feel like we're going to see more fakeness from Mia, that's what I think. That's what I really do think. Because she already lied about her age. She lied about being a bartender instead of a stripper. I still don't believe her story when she was sitting at the spa saying that um, she was a bartender. Then she became a stripper. I honestly believe she was a stripper from the beginning. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong, but that's just what I believe. Uh, Mia, I don't think you've been honest, girl. I just don't. So next episode, we even get to see um, Ashley in the car with her husband. She's going into labor. Labor, she looks like she's really in pain. So that's what we're going to get in episode four. I'm looking forward to episode four. 
Be sure to like my video, go and like my other videos, and subscribe. I need you to subscribe, everyone. It would be such a great thing if you subscribe to my channel. I'm going to put more at the end of the video about what I do so you can learn more about me. I think it would be great for us to connect on that level. So thank you and catch me on episode four. Bye, you guys. excited about my billboard ad. Thank you.